Hi guys, it's Amanda from The Fiction Fairy, and today I'm bringing you a review on Teen Spirit by Francesca LeBlanc, and this book was featured in my January wrap-up. The things that I liked about this book were the character developments and the general story writing. The things I disliked about this book were some of the characters that were introduced I felt like just really weren't needed. Overall, I gave this book a 3 out of 5 cupcakes, and I really liked it. I thought it was really good, and I would recommend it to anybody who hasn't read Francesca LeBlanc yet, and anybody who has read Francesca LeBlanc. Overall, the story is about a girl named Julie. Julie lives in Beverly Hills with her mom, who writes on a hit sitcom, and she lives with her grandmother. Her grandmother lives in the house with her. Unfortunately, Julie is sitting with her grandmother one day, and her grandmother passes away on her, right in front of her. They're in mid-conversation, and she just dies. Now, when Julie's grandmother dies, she sees a purple aura around her. Julie's not sure why she sees this, why it happened to her, but she does. And her grandmother's last words to her were, was that she had something to tell her, but she never got the chance to say what it was. Julie is completely distraught by this and just can't believe what just happened. Julie's mom subsequently ends up losing her job on her hit TV show because it gets canceled and so they can't afford their house in Beverly Hills anymore. So Julie is pretty heartbroken by this because she spent all of her life and all of her time at that house with her grandmother and now her grandma's gone and they're losing that home. So Julie and her mom end up moving to an apartment further away, still in Beverly Hills, but further away from the area in which they lived in. So Julie has to switch schools, she has to adjust to not having her grandmother in her life anymore, and she has to adjust with basically losing her mom because her mom becomes so depressed from losing her mother that she doesn't cook, she doesn't clean, she is generally uninterested in Julie and things that are going on in her life, and she also starts to online date. So Julie's mom finds this kind of like young, hip rocker boyfriend on this online website and begins to spend all of her time with him, um, you know, being depressed and trying to be young and vibrant. And it really leaves Julie to her own devices in this brand new apartment, you know, heartbroken over her grandmother every day. While Julie's at school, she runs into this boy named Clark. And Clark becomes an integral part of Julie's life. Clark is an artistic guy. He doesn't care what people think about him. He wears these, like, random hats on his head every day to school. Sometimes they have elephants. Sometimes they're Rastafarian. You know, he gets made fun of all the time from them. But he really just doesn't care. He's who he is. He's himself. And that's what it's going to be. And Clark ends up giving Julie a lot of comfort in the fact that she's able to be who she wants to be and doesn't have to worry about conforming to the new people at her school. So while Julie's mom is out basically living her own life, Julie and Clark become very close. And one day Clark comes over and a Ouija board falls out of Julie's closet. Now this isn't a Ouija board that Julie brought with her, it's one that just randomly happens to be in the house. Strange, I know, and it just falls by itself from the closet. So Julie automatically thinks that this must be her grandmother trying to get in contact with her because Julie has tried to contact her since the day she died and her grandma's never come to her. So she convinces Clark to use the Ouija board to try to contact her grandma. Well, they start to ask the Ouija board questions and it starts to answer. Clark gets completely freaked out and literally runs from Julie's apartment to his house, like runs. So Julie is freaked out that Clark is freaked out. And what if he goes back to school and tells everybody, like, this chick is a total weirdo. You know, she's playing with Ouija boards. She thinks she can talk to ghosts. Like, just don't hang out though. She's a creeper. He ends up not doing that. He just tells Julie, you know, it makes him uncomfortable. He doesn't want to talk about it. And Julie leaves it alone for a couple of weeks. So her and Clark's relationship continues to grow, and eventually, you know, Julie basically begs Clark to please come back over and try to help me reach my grandmother, because it's never moved, the Ouija board's never moved when I just touch it, it only moves when we both touched it, and I really miss her, and I really want to try to get in contact with her. So, you know, Clark has a soft spot for Julie, of course, so he decides to go back to her house and try to help her. Well, that's when things take a turn for the worse. As we all know, there are certain things in life that you probably should not mess with. They're best to be left alone and just deal with it. Well, Julie had to <sighs> tempt fate a little bit too much, and her and Clark try to reach her grandmother, and they reach somebody. It's not a grandma. The spirit that they end up reaching is one that turns Julie and Clark's world 
upside down on its head, gets ran over by a truck, and then put into a dumpster. It takes this story to places that I honestly did not expect it to go. I expected the story to be pretty cut and dry, and it just completely turned it around. Julie ends up finding out so many secrets about Clark, and these are secrets that literally bring Julie to the brink of death, the secrets that he has kept from her. Clark has to live with secrets that he's kept that literally bring him to the brink of death. I mean, these secrets just completely rip both of them apart and then bring both of them back together. It was absolutely amazing what happened with this. And the spirit that they ended up contacting turns everyone's life upside down. And through that, Julie ends up not becoming just closer with Clark, but Julie also ends up finding out who she is and where she came from. You know, she has been searching for so long, you know, for her grandma to come to her, why she saw what she saw, what her grandmother was trying to tell her. And she's able to answer a lot of those questions through trying to figure out who the spirit is that her and Clark have connected with, what they want, and how they can get the spirit to leave or how they can get the spirit to stay. So this story really just showed Julie going from an innocent girl hanging out with her grandmother by the pool, you know, living life, not a care in the world, to becoming more of a mature adolescent, you know, dealing with loss of her grandmother, the essential loss of her mother, you know, and finding out who she is, how strong she is, and making relationships um, by herself. What I loved about this story was that it really showed that, you know, when somebody you love has passed on, that they're not in the things that they used to have. They're not in the necklace that they used to wear. They're not in the jacket they used to wear. They're not in the grave that you go to visit. They're not in the car that they used to drive. They're not in the house that they used to live, that they're always with you. And that's something that Julie ends up finding out, that she's been searching for her grandmother to come visit her, but her grandmother was never gone. Her body was gone, but her grandma wasn't gone. Her grandma was always in her heart and always in her mind because of the memories that they shared, the love that they shared, and the incredible bond that they shared with each other and once Julie realizes this she really gains a lot of comfort in her life and I think that that piece of the story brings a lot of comfort to just everybody in general so although it was a light read that had you know some really good meat and potatoes it was a really great fundamental story it also had just a terrific kind of message that I didn't think was going to be within the story, you know, that your loved one's always with you. You don't have to seek and find them. They'll always be there in your mind and in your heart. And I thought that that was kind of endearing and that's something that can just help and be relatable to everybody. So this story just really just grabbed me with its mystery, with its, you know, story, with the things that it was saying. And I thought that it was just an incredible read. It was much more than I thought it was going to be when I first picked it up and read it. I was pleasantly surprised, and I would definitely recommend this to anybody who, like I said, has read Francesca LeBlanc or who hasn't read Francesca LeBlanc. This is a fantastic uh, introductory to her. So once again, I gave it a three out of five cupcakes. I really, really loved it, and I recommend it to anybody. I hope that you guys liked this review, and comment below. Tell me if you've read it, if you want to read it, tell me your thoughts about it. And I can't wait to do the next review. So thanks for watching guys. You only know what I want you to